Hey guys, King Cage here, and welcome back to another video. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to model a sword in Blender in under 10 minutes. Let's get right into this. Also, by the way, if you're confused on what buttons I'm clicking at any point in this video, just look down here at the bottom right, and it tells you what buttons I'm clicking. So first off, let's go ahead and highlight all this, click X, and go ahead and click Delete. And now go ahead and go into this point of view right here. Go ahead and click Shift A. Go ahead and go down to Image and add in your reference image. So this is my reference image right here here if you don't have a reference image and you want one what i recommend doing is go over to google and just type in stylized images and then thousands of different sword icons should pop up go ahead and pick one you like and then go ahead and add it over here so what we're gonna do just move it back a little bit now go ahead and click shift a go up to mesh and add in a plane now go ahead and click tab click m and then click merge at center right there and now we just have this little point right here now go back into this point of view and now go ahead and click g so if you click g and if you have a high Highlighted, you should have this little dot right here if you don't have it maybe click a to select everything and then you will see this little dot that moves around now once you have this little dot what you want to do click g to go ahead and move it around and move it on the inner part of the blade so this is the sword right here and this is like the outer part of the blade but we're going to put it on the inner part right here so we would put it about right here or so and now once you have that there go ahead and click e and then move your cursor around and that will extrude the point so there we go now we have this little line right here now make sure that you still have this point selected click e again and now what you want to do is you just want to follow this inner part of the blade right here if you want it to be like really low poly then you can make it super simple and then just go like this but if you don't really care how many vertices it has then you could go ahead and add however much you want just like this but it would be very high poly but i'm just gonna go ahead and keep doing this and gonna go ahead and keep following the outer part of the blade all the way around until we're back at the start And now once you're back at the start, go ahead and do it like this. And then go ahead and select both of these points. So both of these ones right here. So go ahead and select both of them. You can select both of them by clicking shift. And then go ahead and click F to go ahead and merge them just like that. And now we have this right here. So if you go ahead and check it, this is what we have. Looking pretty good, but not looking like a sword so far. But now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and go over to the top of the blade. And we want to go ahead and merge these together. Not merge them, but connect them. And to do that, go ahead and click on this point right here. Hold down shift and then select the this other point and now go ahead and click f and then that will connect them just like that and we want to do that for every point so this one then this one click f this one f this one and then this one f and we pretty much just want to keep doing that for every point if some points don't have them such as this one right here this one doesn't really have one because this point would most likely go to this one you can go ahead and click Control r and then we can just place another point right there so then we can connect both of those two just like this so you want to do this for every point you don't need to do it but i recommend it because it makes it a lot easier later on. And now once you went ahead and did that for every point, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and select edge select. So up here at the top left, click this one right here and then select two edges. So this one and then this one right here and then click F and then that will fill them in. So we want to keep doing that all the way up. Also, if you didn't connect a point such as this one right here, I forgot. So we would have to select them all like this and then click F because as you can see, if we just go like this, it misses this one right here because there's actually a vertice right there. So that's why you want to connect all the points. But if you don't do that, you can always just go ahead and select all the edges just like and then you can go ahead and click f then at the very end just go ahead and select all three and go ahead and click f as well and now what we're going to do go ahead and select edge select up here so this one right here face select i mean click a to select everything go into the side view and then just click e to extrude it extrude it however thick you want your sword to be you can always change it later on so you don't have to finalize it right now now once we have this go ahead and click Control r and you just want to add a loop cut down the center so we're going to put it right there and then just go ahead and right click so it stays in the center and now we have this loop cut right there so now go back into this point of view and click s on your keyboard to go ahead and scale it up so this isn't actually what it's going to look like we're just scaling it up right now to make it easier so there we go so now once we have this right here go ahead and hold down z on your keyboard and go into wireframe right here so then that will allow you to see through it now go back into the vertices select and you want to go ahead and grab the vertices and align them with the sword so we would grab this one right here and then we would put it at the very tip and then we would grab this one and then put it at the very side and then we're just going to do that down the entire sword
And now once you do that for the entire sword, it should look something like this. And then at the very bottom right here, it may look a little bit weird. So just go ahead and select the bottom vertices and then just go ahead and toss them up. Because all these vertices right here, these are all going to be like kind of hidden within this little handle part. So it doesn't really matter too much what this looks like right here. But now that we have this, this is what it looks like. So we can hold down Z to go back into solid view. So this is what it's looking like right here. Pretty nice. And if we want to go ahead and make it thicker, we can go ahead and click tab, click A to select everything. And then we can go ahead and click S, X to scale on the X axis. And we can always make it thicker or thinner just like this. So I think about right there is good. And also since in the picture, it kind of has that little inner thing right there. What we can do is we can go ahead and click tab to go back into edit mode, go into face select and go ahead and select all these faces right here. So just like this, we can either highlight them or select them individually. It doesn't really matter. And then we also want to do the same on the other side right here because it's probably mirrored onto both sides. So let's go ahead and select all of these ones as well. And now once we have all of these selected, we want to go ahead and click I. So if we click I on our keyboard, it will go ahead and do this. If we click it again, it will do it like that, which is kind of weird. But yeah, just go ahead and click I. And then we would want to put it probably about right there. And now what's just right here, we want to go ahead and click Alt E just like this. And then click Extrude Faces along normals just like this. And then we can either extrude it outwards or we can extrude it inwards. So we're going to extrude it inwards just a little bit, just like that. And now if we go back out of edit mode, this is what's currently looking like. Pretty nice, kind of like the image right there. But now what we want to do, we want to click Shift A to add in a cylinder. You can go ahead and modify it down here to how many vertices you want. So we can have like three right there, or we can add like 16. I'm just going to go ahead and do 16 because that's a pretty good number. So now what we want to do, go ahead and click R, Y, 90 to rotate 90 degrees on the Y axis. Go back into this point of view right here. Click Tab to go back into edit mode, which we actually are already in edit mode. Go ahead and scale it down. You can also hold down Z as well to go back into wireframe. And now what you want to do is you just want to align it with this right here. So if your handle looks different, then you can do other stuff as well, such as you can go ahead and copy what I do for these little edges right here. But since this handle right here is circular, we're just going to go ahead and add in a cylinder and go ahead and scale it down click G to move it over here. And let's scale it down a little bit more. And that's probably about good right there. And now let's also make sure it's scaled over here correctly. So let's make sure that we do center it. So there we go. That should be centered. Now we're going to click SX scale it on the x-axis and that is probably a good thickness right there and now we're gonna go ahead and select this face this face click i to inset and then we're gonna go ahead and click alt e extrude faces along normals and extrude it inwards just a little bit and now if you look at the image you'll still see a little curve right there so what we're gonna do go back into the solid point of view and we're gonna go ahead and go into edge select hold down alt and then select these edges right here hold down shift and alt select these edges and then do the same over here hold down shift and alt these edges and then these outer edges there we go and now we're going to go ahead and click Control b and we're going to bevel it so you can use your scroll wheel on your mouse to go ahead and add however many bevels you want the more bevels you have it can start to look kind of weird but it's also going to go ahead and add more vertices and triangles so i kind of stick to a low amount probably about like right there and there we go so now you can see it is pretty curved which is looking pretty nice and now what we're going to do go back over here back into wireframe and let's go back into edit mode let's just go ahead and grab a vertice so go into vertice select right here go and grab like any vertice let's go ahead and grab this one click shift d to duplicate it and then we're just gonna go ahead and move it towards this edge so right here put it right there click e to extrude and then e to extrude again and now we're just gonna go ahead and do this just like this it's not gonna be perfect on this but that's fine so there we go now let's go ahead and do this and just click f to join them together and this doesn't need as much detail as the sword so let's just go ahead and select a vertice hover over the vertice and click l now go ahead and click f and now let's just go ahead and align it so probably Probably about like right there and now go ahead and click e to extrude it just like this and now what we're also going to do is select this face alt e extrude faces on normals show them a little bit just like this and now we're going to go ahead and click s to scale them down so then this adds a little bevel right there we could also do that kind of differently but it's fine so now once we have this we're going to go ahead and click l and then we're going to go ahead and click shift d to duplicate it and now just go ahead and click r to rotate it g to move it and now we're just going to go ahead and align it with this one right here so just about probably around right there that's pretty good let's go back into solid point of view
view. So this is where our sword is currently looking like. It will be a lot smoother in just a second once we go ahead and smoothen it. But right now, this is what it's looking like. Now go back into edit mode. Go ahead and click shift A to add in a cylinder. Go ahead and scale it down. Play G to move it. And we're going to go ahead and add the handle. So let's go back into wireframe just so we can see through it. Let's click R to rotate it. S to scale it. And then let's go ahead and move it about right there. There we go. Now let's select this bottom face. There we go. So this bottom face right here and click G to move it downwards. And now all that's left is this little bottom part. So that should be pretty easy. Go ahead and click shift A to add in a cylinder. Click R, Y, 90. Go ahead and click S to scale it down. G to move it down. Let's go back into wireframe. And we're just going to put it about right there. Now what we're going to do, let's go ahead and scale it on the X axis first. There we go. So the footage cut out, but basically what I did, just select this face, the back face, and then just click I just like this. And that is pretty much where we're at. But now since we have this little face right here, let's select this one, this one, and delete faces. So now we have this little hole through right here. So we're going to go ahead and click edge select. And we're going to go ahead and connect the edges to this one, this one, and then just click F. And we're pretty much just going to go ahead and do this all the way around the circle. And now one last thing we got to do is go ahead and add those little things poking out. Should be pretty easy. Let's just select those two faces, these two faces, which actually there's two right there. So what we got to do is select this one, deselect that one. And now what we're going to do, go ahead and click I, just click anywhere, don't move it. And now click SX. There we go. Just go like that. And now click Alt E, extrude faces log normals. And there we go. Now go ahead and click E, go ahead and scale it up a little bit. And now go ahead and click Alt E again. And I'll just go ahead and extrude them a little bit farther. And there we go. Now that is looking pretty good. These are a little bit bent, which we could fix those, but I think that actually looks pretty good. So now this is what our sword is looking like. Pretty good. We could add a lot more details, but this is just a simple tutorial. So I think this is good for now. Let's go ahead and center these as well. So now there's one last thing we got to do, and that is to smoothen it out. So go ahead and right click it. And if you have the newest update or whatever, you can go ahead and click shade auto smooth. But if you don't have that, you can go ahead and click shade smooth then go down to this little triangle go down to normals and go ahead and click auto smooth and then this will auto smooth it for you so it may look a little bit weird still but you can go ahead and move this up and down so if you put it all the way up it does end up looking kind of weird but if you go ahead and put it down as you can see it doesn't smooth it at all so just go ahead and mess with this until they're all smooth such as let's go ahead and look at this right here let's move it up and i'll say that's probably about good right there which it will go ahead and look much better once it's colored and actually i kind of want this to be a sharp corner so we would go ahead and move this down and then just like that there we go and then it will look much better once it's colored and if we go ahead and add more detail but anyway that is how you go ahead and create a pretty simple sword in blender though so that's gonna be all for this video so go ahead and leave a like subscribe and turn on post notifications and i'll see you all in the next video